to Crowley House Flower Farm. Today is kind of a fun day because it's still the dead of winter, but I am determined to plant something. We've had some really cold nights, freezing weather in the 20s, but actually I can plant some hellebores. So I thought I would take you along as I run down to our local nursery. This one's owned by a friend of mine and it's one of my favorite nurseries and I just love her because she uh, runs it along with her family and I just value that so much and can understand partly because we run our farm as a family as well and so it's really kind of fun to have you know kind of something in common and I didn't know her when I first started coming to this um, little nursery and it started off really really small and I just love the values of it, so I just kept supporting her. But now, her, it looks amazing. She opened the beginning of January, and I'm gonna head out. It's kind of out in the country, so it's a nice drive. I'm gonna grab a coffee. I think my son's gonna come along, and he's gonna film for me. And we're gonna check out our hellebores because I saw a post on Instagram, and she had some amazing hellebores. Last year, Jay and I went to a hellebore grower here in Oregon. They're down by Eugene. I believe they sold their business and farm, which I knew that they were getting ready to retire. Very sad day. But um, my husband and I have fallen in love with hellebores. I don't know about you guys, but absolutely love them. So I thought I'm just going to add a couple more to my collection. I actually have a few here on the farm that need to get into the ground. So I'm going to plant those as well. I'm also going to try and pick up some pansies and the pansies I want to pick up are more for um, edible flowers. So I'm going to plant them in the greenhouse. I have a few that I started but from seed on my own, but um, I'm just going to get some soil and bulb crates and plant up just a few so that we can have a plethora of edible flowers early and um, I like to plant those next to my sweet peas. Yeah, it's it really is chilly you guys. Um, I'm done with chilliness, but I know it's necessary because the cool weather brings on the bulbs and beautiful flowers and it needs this time to actually grow beautiful things in the garden. So, okay, so I'm off. Okay, so we made it to Wavra Nursery. Braden's with me. I am so excited to see all their hellebores, and um, we're gonna see if we can catch her, the owner of the place, and see if she can give us a little talk on the hellebores that they have, because what I saw online was amazing and beautiful, but I love this place. are one of our favorite plants here at Wavra and the reason is is because they're deer resistant, they're evergreen, they're super easy. All you do is you plant them and you kind of forget them. Yeah. So they're drought tolerant and really there's not a whole lot to do with them. Just a little bit of shade and... A little bit of shade, usually a little bit of shade in the afternoon, so morning sun, afternoon shade works okay. really well. And they will take full sun. In fact, I do have a couple in my yard in the full sun. You just need to give them a little more water in the afternoon in the summertime. Is it kind of like um, hostas, where hostas, there are certain hostas that take more sun than others, but are these just all... They're all about the same, so they will oh, all cool. pretty much take full sun. Um, anything that's got a little bit of variegation on it, you know, just kind of like with your hostas, I would tend to give a little more protection in the afternoon. Okay, that's good to know. So, but now you're the florist. So, <laughs> I mean, I put things in my yard. I never really, you know, cut them. 
um, or have time for that. Do you use these in bouquets? I do. So we grow them as a cut flower, and it's something that we actually get to enjoy them in the garden quite a bit because you have to wait for the bloom to actually go to seed. This little part here, the pistol? Pis 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 yes. Okay, so yes. that one's getting to it. So you have to wait until that basically stage. is done so it kind of gets to a leathery stage. Yeah, then. and then you can cut it and then it holds really well for a really long time in a vase. So how long, I mean, are we talking seven days? Yeah, or over. So it just depends on the stage that you cut it. Uh -huh. But a lot of times it's that. And then later in the season, we actually use the leaf as a foliage. Oh, that makes sense. So you can only cut a few off of each plant, but you can use it in an arrangement. So it's really, really cool. So like this variegated, that's what, I don't know how tall this that one is. That would cut your eye. So <laughs> yeah, so it goes about 18 to 24 inches. So all of them kind of do that. So, but you got to figure, you know, the leaves are going to stay a little bit lower. So like on this gorgeous white here, you know, you're going to have the leaves probably about, you know, eight inches, nine inches. Yeah. I mean, so it's probably going to be for a smaller bud arrangement. I don't right. know if they're going to get big enough for a yeah, larger no, bouquet. Yeah, they, they get, you know, like this is the longest I have. Like the, the top of the leaf uh -huh. is here, and so that's kind of where it goes. People love it. I don't always use it, but sometimes if I'm doing something a little bit moody or tropical, then I'll pull a leaf off of it, and it works. And it's almost like you only need two leaves at the base of the vase nice. kind of thing. Very nice. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so we've got a couple different ones in, so... um. This one here is a really, really pretty red. And so this is the Ice and, ice and Roses red. I think I red. have a few of these. And then even that dark, dark purple double. Oh, yes. Or it's like dark black or something like that. I have one of those. So that's great. And then this, this is one. the variegated one. And so this is called Snow Fever. And then it's going to have kind of a pink flower, a real pale, almost creamy pink. Here. So... It's kind of got like almost green to it. It too. does a That's, little bit. That would be really good in wedding work. Very nice. Along with the white one. And the white is just stunning. This is kind of one of our favorites. This is the Ice and Roses white. And it just has a really nice flower to it. And it seems like, you know, sometimes they have larger flowers. Yeah. And just the flower size on that. I mean, look how many buds you're going to be able to get off that. Just Those beautiful. are just and really nice. this time of year when the garden's starving for color. Right. <laughs> it's so nice. So then this one here, I only had one or two of this. This is Glenda's Gloss. And this is really pretty because the back side, you get that pinky color on the back. So it just really fills out. A new one for us this year is the Apricot, Shades of Apricot. And that's I, in the Winter Jewels. I love that one. Well, and some of them that we've had have been more like butterscotchy. Yeah. These ones tend to be a little more yellow, but still you get that great coloring I even on it. the back. Yeah. Um, so those are really nice. And then the Cherry Blossom Jewels. That is it gorgeous gets too. It gets this great little like ring around the inside. Oh, it's so pretty. Super I wish their heads were upright. But. Correct. And this one does, I mean, it tends to step a little more, upright. but um, not as much. And then this is an older one that we've had, Pink Frost. Yeah. That's been around for and a while. And I have Pink Frost at home, and then I have that, the jewel, uh, what would you call that one? The jewels. Yeah. The, the red. The purple. But, so, um, so really, what do you put with these? I mean, you're telling me you're doing cut flowers with them. What are you going to put with them for pairings? Well, a lot of times when we're doing, uh, this is an early or a winter type bloom, and then it kind of goes into spring. So a lot of times we're looking at anemones, ranunculus. Yeah. Um, we've got some, yeah, pretty much. There you go. A ranunculus. Oh, and this is an enemy. I should know this. But that's cute. I mean, because if you think about it, you pair it next to, you know, cut a few of those blooms in a vase. Well, and even the hyacinth. Hyacinth, I mean, is just a very soft yeah, color. Yeah, so you can totally pop that in there. Uh, Dusty Miller. I like to use Dusty Miller with foliage um, for a foliage type. And it just, and especially in weddings and stuff, but um, that just looks really nice and elegant. I mean, it just goes really well as a winter foliage. Well, then some of the primroses are blooming now, and these are like the taller varieties that are the perennial ones, the oak leaf varieties. I know. I love these. And I've always wanted to grow them because I watch Gardener's World. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they always have these amazing, beautiful long stems that you can use. Well, and these are so easy because they go full shade, and I have them blooming really? in my garden year-round. Really? So, I mean, they're I just starting think, just to kind of I pump mean, it up again. You think about that, and you just pop it up against... 
I mean, if you kind of grouped this together, you pulled some great stuff. <laughs> um, well, and these are all kind of spring things that yeah. you're finding right now at the garden stores. I know. So cool. So I love just this. kind of a fun coloring fun of mix. things. And then, you know, Daphne is also coming into bloom now as well. The winter Daphne. Yes. Winter Daphne is one of my favorites. Um, is it Sarah? I can never say it right. Sarah Coca? Or yes. Okay. So that's the other one that we use a lot of. But this, I like, um, like, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Like, you have a little bit of the yellow tinge, and then you get that pink. Right. So Especially yummy. you get the fragrance as well. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. No, so I, I love it. Lots so of choices. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay, so last thing, I, I know that um, sometimes hellebores can get, like, the black spot or mm -hmm. kind of like roses. And then slugs. Right. And slugs... <laughs> Slugs tend to leave them alone a little bit more so because they do have the thicker leathery foliage. Okay. So they will leave the heliobores alone. They're going to go for your hostas and some of the tender things first. But um, since they are evergreen, and if you do get a couple nasty leaves, you just cut them off. Okay. And then they're always sending up new growth. And so really, it's not a problem. I mean, for all of the plants in the garden, heliobores are one of those things that is pretty much a plant it, leave it alone, forget it. So we cut our foliage off kind uh -huh. of late, or I guess it'd be late, late fall, this right. winter, um, just to kind of help with, like, you know. Correct, to get the, the new fresh growth yeah, coming Yeah, and up. just with disease and stuff right. like that. Because, I mean, there was a couple plants that I had that do tend to, like, get the little black spot right. on it. That aren't as attractive, yes. Yes. <laughs> so, I mean, that would just be, like, a fungicide kind uh -huh. of deal, kind of like your peonies get right right okay and so yeah just basic spray of some mm -hmm. sort if you choose to do that if not Correct. then just to remove the dead and throw dead leaves and actually throw it away <laughs> throw it away and not okay it. <laughs> correct oh my gosh i'm learning so much well i'm actually confirming what i know <laughs> no what it is. perfect i mean perfect. i don't know everything but i sometimes i'm like i think that's right so i'm gonna do it but right um i, I love good. this one too because of the the leaf is a little variegated and i think that one does that as well i have this one at home but you know here you're kind of talking about you know kind of the scuzzy leaves yeah and every once in a while this is just an older leaf right that didn't last get taken years. off last year's growth yeah and then you've got the new ones coming up and so this one could just easily be snipped out right and then like you said just kind of tossed zoning on these they i hear you can go pretty dang cold right some of them are like minus, zone five yeah it's so like negative 20. 20. <laughs> so yes no they are good and hearty which yeah. makes it nice so i think for people especially like um people on that watch my channel a lot of them are still buried in snow and they're like what should we do i'm like man if you could have some of these hellebores right and then popping up through the snow. I mean, they might be a little bit slower just because it's so cold. Correct. Compared to our zone. But it gives but you some still, nice color coming up. I mean, up. yeah. I don't know. I would. They're definitely a yeah. go-to for early spring color. Yes, definitely. So I'm adding to my little shade garden. Fantastic. Yeah. And um, so I just wanted to grab a few to pop in. Well, I will let you make some selections and <laughs> okay. see what works I'm gonna for you. Always, well, I brought the little car today so I wouldn't like <laughs> haul trees home and my husband's gone. So <laughs> you'll be like, what the That's heck? That's okay. You just plant him quick while he's gone. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And um, Thanks for yeah. coming to visit. Nice to see you again. Yeah, I know. Thank you. Okay, see you later. a wheelbarrow full of some compost. Um, when I'm planting these, I think I'm just going to put some compost in just because we have clay soil. And I've really been working on the cool garden here, which is the garden we're gonna be putting these hellebores in. So this is kind of where I'm going to be planting. We've got one white hellebore right over here. And so I thought I'd tuck that variegated white one. Let me show you. So this is that gorgeous, gorgeous white one with the variegated leaf. I just love that. So I only got one of them, but um, I know you can collect seed off these, which is really kind of cool. Uh, so this is called Snow Fever. I just love how that looks. So I'm gonna pop it next to this other white one that we have.
So I have two of these Winter Jewel Cherry Blossom Hello Pores. And so her, actually I have one already planted, but this is the second one. And I'm just gonna pop them right behind me here in this little circle garden that's up by the house. Just this right where people walk through. This is lined with some beautiful tulips that kind of pop through here. And then we have those bluebells as well. And I just think those cool colors are just gonna look amazing. I love how that little ruffle in the inside, you guys see that? And that kind of the speckly variegated leaf. Oh, that's gonna be a beauty. Okay, I'm gonna plant this guy. And then I've got another spot for the other new yellow ones that we got. Because I'm in love with those too. Hellebore is one of my husband's favorite flower. And so I'm gonna tell him I got him this for Valentine's Day, because I didn't get him anything. But we don't usually celebrate it, partly because we just celebrate our love all the time. It's just constant Valentine's Day around here. I'm kidding, it's not true. Okay, so I'm moving on over here, and I'm gonna take those beautiful yellow ones that we just got, those are new to me. I'm in love. Okay, this is really cool because I think as it ages, it kind of has a, a different look to it. But look at that. Isn't that stunning, you guys? I mean, I would, I would take a whole field of these. I think one day I might. I don't know if Jason will let me, but we'll try. I have a whole bunch. I actually need to plant a whole bunch. So some of the varieties that she had there at the nursery I already have. I think I have about 20 more to get in the ground, but these are the new fun ones. So um, planting these today. And then, um, yeah, and then I have just one more of those Daphne's. I had bought in two of them and one of the Daphne's had just failed, died a couple of years ago. And I've just always really wanted another one kind of close to the front door. I'm not sure where I'm gonna put it, but um, I think that's where it's gonna go and uh but i'm not sure i haven't decided this is like painting it's like i'm figuring out where all these beautiful flowers are going to go and you kind of have to think in the future of what the garden's going to look like and obviously you're always moving things and adjusting things as you know plants get bigger or um outgrow a space or just don't work anymore with your color palette and uh, so I've done my fair share of that. And I actually kind of enjoy doing that. It's kind of fun to just, you know, kind of rearrange. It's almost like rearranging your furniture. <laughs> so I'm gonna get these guys in the ground over here. So there was quite a bit of this leaf mold and uh, pine needles and really nice dirt through here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover this back up, partly because we're gonna have some really cold nights ahead of us still. And I wanna make sure that these little guys are nice and insulated in their new home. Pull some over here. So I got the three apricot blushes in. The sun is setting fast, so I gotta get to work. I've got the three elephant ears to get into the ground and the Daphne really quick. And that, those are all the things that I bought today that I need to get into the ground before the sun sets. And um, I'm really liking how this is gonna turn out. Of course, it's gonna take a while um, for this to look full and robust, but it's a start. I can see it in my eye. So this will be nicely shaded in the winter or summer. They'll get a little bit of sun in the morning, but that should be fine. That's what she said, right? So the sun is setting really fast and it is getting cold. I was hot, I worked up a sweat and that's the thing. I'm trying to get out in the garden every single day, do something. Today was kind of a bigger project. I didn't finish it. So I think there's gonna have to be a part two to this um, video, but 
for now, I'm just gonna show you really quick what I did. I, I found a little home for the winter Daphne, which is not exactly where I wanted it, but the ground was so rocky where I wanted to put it that I just had to make another decision, and I think I'll be happy with it. Like I said, things can move, right? This is the dead of winter, so I decided to go ahead and put my Daphne right here, and it's in line, if you look straight that way, there is, the other Daphne is over by the cars. So it's just gonna come here next to this little pathway and Shyla, and it's leading over to a water feature that is broken that I am going to redo this um, summer. So, and then I just finished popping the white variegated uh, hellebore there next to another white and then if you back up, you can see the three elephant ears, which are going to have the pink flower coming up. And yeah, it's a start to a big mess, but soon it will look beautiful and you guys will be like, oh, now I know what she's talking about. So I can see it in my head. I think it's going to be beautiful when it gets all finished and done. Um, I'll take you for a last quick look. Ooh, the sun is setting at what I'm thinking over here. It's the yellow apricot blush, the winter apricot blush. And then on this side, I went with that darling. I think this one's my favorite today. If I had to choose one, this is the uh, cherry blossom. I think it's because that little dark center in the middle, but uh, isn't that fun? Okay, you can see spring is on its way, tulips. Uh, we've got, these are just a little, uh, petunias that are, the slugs are eating but lots and lots of little tulips coming up and all the things so when I'm planting hellebores I want to make sure that I've got nice compost uh, the soil is loose we have clay here so we have to really work on amending the soil I don't put any fertilizer down or anything like that I just just the compost is good enough for now and then, you know, we're just gonna watch for slugs. One thing you can do is put down a little bit of uh, filbert, cracked filberts. You can't always find that in every part of the country, but here in Oregon, we are a huge filbert grower. And so it's, sometimes you can go to the filbert farms and just pick up loads of it. And that really helps on slugs, but and that's a natural way to do it. And I love actually, I'd really like to do a pathway or a couple pathways in the hazelnut um, chips because it just when you're walking across it it just has this really nice crunch that's so satisfying so anyways I think I might start investing in some of those and then um, yeah so that's kind of it I just compost it's just simple you know make sure your soil is good compost and then um, if you do get some of the black spots then you will um, just need to spray a little bit of a fungicide or something like that. Just make sure the leaves are cleaned at the end of the season. Hellebores are so easy, you guys. Just so easy. Go, go get some. Go find some. I saw that uh, even Costco and some of the big box stores had them for fairly inexpensive. Uh, I like to support the little guys, so uh, that's why I went out to my friend over at Wabra. Anyways, until next time, much success in all you do and grow, and we'll be seeing you shortly back here at Crowley House very soon. Bye-bye. Okay, that sunset, I'm not sure if I can capture it. Nope.